Welcome to GEM Advanced Magnetometers. Today we will be reviewing the assembly of GEM's Triaxial Helicopter Bird. The Triaxial Helicopter Bird is a streamlined platform for making ultra-high sensitivity magnetic measurements as well as optional very low frequency or VLF measurements. This platform can be used in a variety of applications ranging from mineral exploration to UXO and more. In this video, we will be reviewing all of the steps required to put the platform together, including basic assembly of the platform, along to the final wiring of the platform, ready for flight and installation on the helicopter. It's important to remember that we are using brass non-magnetic screws. It is not advised to use a magnetic screwdriver, as the brass has small inclusions that can become magnetized and interfere with the smooth operation of the magnetometer. Okay, now we're going to insert the rear of the tube to the front tube. Keep it up. It's important to keep the angle. Keep it up. Proper. Go push a bit. And when done correctly, it should slide in quite easily. Next, we're going to put the screws to secure the tubes. And if you feel they're a little bit tight, some movement may be required. In this step, we are looking at the assembly of a magnetometer into one of the pods. This is an exercise you will do three times for each bird you are assembling. First, the pod top has to be removed to reveal the inside. We see there's a base for mounting the gimbal. And the sensor has to be first put inside the gimbal. This requires loosening off the screws and inserting the GSMP35A airborne potassium sensor into the gimbal. Then insert the cable and push it through the arm. Shaking helps to move the cable down the arm. When the cable comes through the other end, grab it and pull it through. Notice that the cable is pulled fairly tight and the gimbal is installed onto the gimbal plate. Now adjust the sensor for the correct angle. This angle is determined by the hemisphere and the angle of the local magnetic field. The next step will help you in arranging the screws into the gimbal plate. Turn the gimbal again and tighten the sensor screw. You then turn the gimbal again and tighten the screw. The following step is to put back the top of the pod, align it with the preset marks, and tighten the screws on the outside of the pod. Now the basic pod assembly is complete. You would do this three times for each bird you are assembling. Next, we are going to be installing the arms of the bird into the fuselage. All the parts are numbered so you can easily see which parts go together. The first step is to take the back cone off the bird. Now look at the holes for the arms and you will notice that they are labeled so you know which arm to install in which hole. Next put in a strut. but don't tighten it as you need some slack to make the connection with the main part of the arm. Put the cables through the second opening in the fuselage and pull the cable through. Insert the sensor arm and snap it together 
Repeat the assembly for the second and third supporting members and pods. It may be necessary when assembling while tightening the screws to pull gently on the arms so that the screw holes line up. Now we are inserting the pod marked 1 into the top of the fuselage. This step is repeated until all three pods are inserted. In this step we show the magnetometer cables being inserted into the fuselage. Gently push the cables as far through as you can. If one cable does not go through all the way, Pull back gently and retry until the cable emerges from the large opening near the front of the fuselage. By now we've completed about half of the assembly of the bird. We're just moving on to assembling the struts that support the pods while they're in flight. The support clamp is pre-shipped on the arm and you keep it loose during the assembly so that you have some slack to position the support rods. Each strut is positioned and secured. During flight we do not want the bird to be tilted to one side or the other side and we can use these three support rods with the clamps to adjust the bird to make sure that it's flying uh, level. So to do that, first of all, we just have hand tightened the rod so they still have some movement, okay? And then we're able to move and adjust the clamp as required. And we can do this using the combination of all three pulls to make the bird uh, level. And once we're satisfied, we're gonna tighten uh, the rods and the clamps. For this procedure normally to be done, it uh, should be done with the bird hanging, uh, suspended by the tow cable, so that you can see the actual uh, attitude of the bird. In this step, we will be assembling the tail section of the bird, which includes three support rings, a medium ring, a small ring, and a large ring at the back as well as three plastic fins and a skirt. The amount of skirt put on is optional depending on the weather conditions. If the wind is high, you will require less skirt. For calm air, you need more drag and you'll have more skirt on the tail. In this step, we're going to assemble the support rings for the tail. Each support ring contains three sections. Here we have the middle ring being installed on the front of the pod. With a single screw on the back of each section, leaving the section loose. Then we move on to the small sections. You'll notice that each ring is labeled so you know which section to install. As you can see, there are three plastic fins be inserted between the sections of the medium and small support rings. The large support rings are attached to the plastic fins. The bolts go through each section and the fin and are tightened. The first bolts to be tightened are the ones on the fins and then the second set of bolts to be tightened are the actual rings themselves. In this part of the fin assembly, we're going to attach the struts provided for securing the fins. This keeps all of the components in place and secured during flight. The skirt materials are then attached to each fin. The next step is to connect the magnetometer cables to the magnetometers. 
We start by taking out the cable that goes to the tow cable and putting it to one side. And then we pull out the other cables and move them aside. One by one we're going to remove the magnetometers and put each of the three cables required for the magnetometer. We first pull out the thumb screws that secure the magnetometer electronic boxes inside the bird. The securing plate is removed. And each magnetometer electronics box is pulled out. Next, we are going to connect the magnetometer electronic boxes to the wires that are required. Next, we put the cables together. Including the signal cable, the RF cable, and the 6-pin control cable. Attach the power cable on the other side, which will also be marked, and reinsert the electronics box into the tube. You will need to repeat this process three times. When the magnetometer electronics boxes have been repositioned, they are secured by the plate and the screws and are fully firm within the fuselage. Okay, so we're going to connect the power for the magnetometers and the power for the radar altimeter. The order of those is not important. And this is the communication from the MUX to the PC and the helicopter. Once we make those connections, we can put them inside. This is marked with the direction to the front, so this must go this way. And we'll then secure the screws. The final step is to insert the lanyards for towing and then the cotter pin through the bolt which gets inserted and tightened. The long lanyard goes to the front of the bird and the short lanyard goes to the back. This helps in stabilizing the bird as it flies and keeping it at the right angle. You also have adjustments in the tail which can be made to further stabilize the bird for flight. This means that you have two possible adjustments that you can make to streamline the bird so that it flies level and straight. This completes the video of the assembly of GEM's triaxial helicopter bird. We have reviewed all of the steps from basic assembly to final wiring. If you would like more information about this bird, visit GEM's website at www.gemsys.ca.